Hello everyone and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today from the barn, it's kind of late, so I wanted to reflect a little bit and share with you some of the positives that I was able to see and some of the negatives I was able to see while I was hand milking my does. If you remember, I mentioned that I was talking to a a uh, goat mentor who was explaining that it's better to hand milk at least for the first two months especially if you have first freshener if you always have the same dose I mean one year you can do it but then you know it's it's good to have your hands on your dose adder for at least two weeks if they're the same older dose that you are breeding every year but that is the most important thing you can do when you're trying not only to learn like I'm trying to learn, but also when you're trying to see what needs to stay in your farm and what needs to go. How are you going to cool uh, part of your herd if you really don't do this? At least I find it very hard to make that decision. So, number one, what you learn is how easy it is to milk because of two things. Number one is the texture of the udder. It is not the skin, because the skin, if it's rough, you can moisturize it. Or if the skin is, you know, there are things that you can do with the outside skin, but it's the texture of the udder, what you can tell by hand milking. When you put them in a little teacup, you know, to milk them, it really, the machine is doing all the touching and all the moving and all the things. So you can't really tell how soft this udder is compared to other girls. And by having a super soft texture, you're able not only to maneuver that teat and kind of grab her from the top and express the milk easier, but also it's going to help more come out without having to pump so much or having to bump, I should say, so much in order to have milk come down. So really important for me, the texture, and that's how you can tell by hand milking. And not only one dough, but if you have more than one that it's in milk, you can kind of see which one is starting to look better compared to the other ones. Another thing that you'll be able to tell, and this is really important to me, and I know that I've heard this from other people as well, is you'll be able to see the orifices. <laughs> it sounds so weird, but I promise you that if you have more than two to three, maybe four does in milk, oh my goodness, you can tell which one has the bigger orifices because of how fast you're able to milk the dough. I, out of everyone, everyone in my herd, um, it's been Annabelle, the one that's been the easiest to milk because she has really big orifices. But this year, it's been Briere. And Briere kind of surprised me because in the beginning, as I was talking to this breeder, I was telling her, you know, I don't, I can't see it. I can't see it. I don't know why. I don't really love her at her. I don't really love the structure. I don't really love a lot of things. But now I put her on the stand and I'm like, oh, now it's shaping up. Oh, now it's looking better, you know? And of course, it's after those six weeks is when it finally takes the shape that it will be for at least that year. And, you know, each year will be changing and will be, you'll be able to see the things that are improving and the things that are really stuck and not progressing. So it's just one of those things that I promise you, I promise you that once you have a dough with big orifices, you never want to milk one with small orifices. It will take me about five squeezes from mocha to get the same amount I can get in one or two in Briere's. And this is something that I've done it, I've compared it, I put it side by side and I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. So I'm doing double the work to get the same amount of milk out of mother and daughter. You know, 
yes, yes, Mocha will produce more milk than Briere because Briere is her first freshener, but I cannot believe how easy it is to milk Briere. I, she's not my my really up in production dough, but that's another thing that with a different, I, and again, you need to take pictures because that's how you can tell. Like, I was looking at Clara's picture of her first freshening um, udder and I was looking at Athene's, you know, her udder right now as being a, a first time mom and you know, I thought that Athene's udder was looking small. I compared it to Clara's first freshening and I thought, no, no. They both had twins and their udder looks pretty much the same size. Yes, they're different in structure and I think Athene is an improvement from Clara, but I can only, I, I will always be able to see that in future freshenings as she's developing and growing that udder, especially as she has more kids. Right now she had twins and for being a first time mom, that's pretty good. And I think it was perfect to kind of get her going with that maternal instinct and taking care of the baby. So two things are very important by hand milking that you will learn for sure, which is the texture of the udder that will make it easier because it's softer so you can get a lot more milk out faster when the udder is kind of tougher and more muscular feeling you really have to grab the teeth from the base and put a lot of pressure in order to get the milk out so there are differences and i think coming back to the big orifices and the skin it's a big combination that makes the milking so much faster so much better and overall a greater experience now does this mean that you really don't need to use a machine no i think machines are great and i think that even if you have a small homestead it's really a good idea to have an affordable machine that you really know how to use them because you have to depending on the kind that you have in order to keep your udders in good condition but it's also nice to have one of those machines because in case that something happened you cannot milk that day or something really um, stops you from doing it it's easier to teach somebody to milk on a machine compared to milking by hand that really takes a lot of practice and it will be easier to find somebody that will do the chore for you if it's a machine compared to learning a new skill overnight to try to milk your goats in case of an emergency that you can't really get to them and you need to. So there is a lot of um, different things, different benefits from having a milking machine, but I advise you, as I was advised, that the importance of getting to know your first fresheners, the importance to be, put your hands on those udders and if your goal is to improve those udders, that is the only way that you will be able to see the improvements or non-improvements that you got from that pairing. And again, having a good bug will always make a difference as far as the daughter's udders, but combining it with one of your doughs is going to be completely different than com let's say you pair your buck with dough A you know that's a combo but then you pair it with B and it's a completely different combo so having your hands on first fresheners it's really a good idea and at least for me it taught me so much that now I'm really thinking about the next step which is compare Dom's daughters compared to Rocky's daughters with the combination between my does and them. It really becomes a comparison game where you're trying to figure out, is this a good thing? Is this a good improvement? Is that daughter from that combination better? That, that same daughter with a different dad? In the end, it's just something that for me, it's really helpful. And I thought that I, 
should share this information with you because if what you're trying to achieve is good milkers, good milkers starts with a good udder. And I'm not saying that everyone in your herd will have the perfect udder, but if you have an udder that is somewhat good and you compare it with an excellent buck, then you can kind of see how you're improving on that and how much better you know the future generations will be for you and in the end it really helps me um, see my does from a different perspective meaning i need to understand that i'm going to have to make cuts and by making those cuts, I need to see who's given me two daughters from two different bucks that I own, who is improving more, who is able to stay. And in the end, it's all going to come down to the udder. Who is producing the best udders? Who is uh, easier to milk? Who has the best texture? Who has the best structure in order to have a good udder for a really long time that is going to help me determine who's going to stay and who's going to go there are going to be some cuts and they're not going to happen immediately now summer is um, starting and you know the girls can go on pasture during the day as soon as the babies leave and i you know, I'm starting to milk a theme. There's a lot of things going on, but coming the fall, I'm going to pair them with a best buck and I'm going to offer them as pregnant and likely some of them will still be, be in milk for some time. Now, I have a good idea, thankfully, after this two months experiment, well, over two months experiment, now I have a better idea who needs to stay and who needs to go. But it would really surprise you to know that the first girl I knew I was going to call, it's the one that I want, I want to stay. <laughs> and um, I'm kind of set on her, she needs to stay. So give if, if there's something that you can take out of this video and if you're starting with goats and stuff like that is number one give them six weeks number two hand milk and learn who's easier to milk who's faster to milk who produces more milk but just by you milking them you will learn so much that at the moment to take that decision of who needs to stay and who needs to go, it really will give you a better idea. Now, if you have a milking machine and you've been doing this for years, you probably know what you like and what you don't like. But I'm gonna tell you that some of those people that even have the experience, I feel like sometimes they don't put their hands on their first fresheners and when they do, they're surprised to see that uh, maybe the udder is not as easy to milk as other does, and maybe they're not even registered does, you know? It, it is just that, you know, we're breeding into them good things, but sometimes if we're not paying close attention, we can miss some others not so great things that uh, we either want or not want in our herd. So for me, this two months of hand milking, two plus months of hand milking, really uh, made me move things up and down on that list of who needs to go and who needs to stay, who needs another chance. And there's one doe in particular that I, I, I don't know if I want to give her another chance. And you know, that's, that's when you start to think, um, you know, the bigger picture, what is the bigger picture? Um, and you know, it all kind of started with when I started putting in paper, who's going to go to the show? I mean, who am I going to take to the show? And that's when I realized, oh my goodness, I don't have that many that I really want to take to a show because I know that this one has this, this one has this other thing, this one this has has this other thing that I, I know they're not going to do good in shows. 
but I know that what they're producing, the growth that they're producing, and I'm starting to see in milk, um, they're good. So it really is, do I want to improve on this dough in particular with our future generations, or do I want to pass the girl along because it has a good structure and good potential to pair with a good back and produce amazing daughters for somebody else? Or do I want to keep her and continue to see what she produces because what she's producing is good? There is, and, and again, this is just, there is not one perfect udder in my herd. Um, some some girls have better udders than others, but there's not one that is completely perfect. So it's 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 a matter of seeing what I like and what I don't like. Who's easier to keep? Who's not? Who is? Um, you know, it's just all the little things that in the end help go towards the beginning of that calling list list or at the bottom. And so, you know, making cuts, it's really, really hard for me because of the kind of connection that I have with my doughs. But at the same time, I know that my goal is this. And what I need to do in order to get to that point is, you know, what really matters. And feeding a good um, feeding good hay, feeding good grain, feeding uh, good alfalfa, having great minerals, keeping up with all the medicine that they need, having a good supply of stuff, you know, doing the maintenance and all those things. The more, the more goats you have, the harder that it gets, the more you depend on somebody else to help you, even if you have to, you know, either if you have to disbud or you have to, like right now we are in that um, banding process and I do need somebody to hold them in order to be able to band them properly and not make a mistake. Once you put that band on, you cannot move it. Um, that's what I've been told by my vet. Once you put it on, you do not move it. So it has to go specifically where it should go in order to uh, heal and, you know, be a good job. So all those things to go through my head and all, in the end, it's all really important information to help me make a better decision. So I hope that this things that I'm sharing with you today will help you um, get a better understanding or maybe try something different with your herd if you're trying to think about who's going to stay and who's going to go in your herd. And also, of course, this is going to depend on your personal goals for your herd. Maybe you're not as interested in creating the perfect milker. Maybe you're not that interested in hand milking. Maybe you just want to, you just want to have, you know, a milk machine and you really don't care about those details that probably your calling list is going to look completely different from mine. Um, I know there's a lot of people that focuses on, you know, either blue eyes and, you know, pulled or moon spots or this or that. And they have amazing success because everyone loves those beautiful uh, patterned goats with blue eyes, pulled and moon spots. Everyone loves them. It's easier to sell a goat like that than your typical chamoise with a great structure. Like they have to really understand what they're looking for, what you know, what they're trying to buy, and pay what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, that is all that I've been learning. That is all that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you're able to share with me in the comments down below your experiences and also what you want from your personal herd. We are all different and we all want different things for our herds and I think we can all agree that we want healthy animals. But in the end, um, what we want to breed into our program could be completely different and that's okay. We just have to agree to disagree in some things 
but I think it's really important to kind of share what works for us and this really worked for me. So if you have any tips, any ideas, any things that you've tried before and you think that we could try and you know other people could try as well and see if it works for them, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. If you're new, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and don't leave without leaving a comment. That will help with the YouTube algorithm and sharing this video with other people that might be looking for this information. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, guys.